Uh, good morning. We're getting ready to build some stairs this morning on an old ranch house. We're going from a, a garage to a, a loft up in the attic. So here's our, here's our pad. We're going to go on up here to that plywood platform right there. All right, I've gone ahead and done the math. We have an overall rise of 110 and 5 eighths. We figured out we want about 15 steps, which equals exactly a 7 and 3 eighths rise and a 10 inch run. The most important part, in my opinion, in selecting your material for stairs is something that's straight and true. I've got some 2 by 12 dug fir. I'm going to have three stringers. All three of them are, are nice prime pieces of uh, lumber. This one right here uh, is going to be my, my pattern, so I'm going to cut this guy first. As always, if there's a slight crown, you put the crown up, and that's the portion we're going to be cutting first. The traditional tool in laying out a set of stairs has always been the framing square. I've laid out hundreds of sets of stairs with this, uh, this particular square. As you can see over time, uh, the numbers in this case have worn off quite a bit, so it's a little difficult to see. And uh, accuracy means everything in stairs, so, so I'm, I, I don't have the confidence in this I did when it was brand new. So today we're going to use a version of this square. This is called Smart Square. Okay, unlike any other square in the world, it's got an adjustable fence. You can go to either side, if you're right-handed, left-handed, if you need to switch it, it takes less than a second to do it. And in this position, this is the 180 degree detent, it adds one inch to this overall measurement. And as you can see with a smart square, the fence itself is laid out and is now a usable part of the square. But obviously for the stairs, this, this version is gonna be a little small. So we're gonna go with our Smart Square Pro. This is the Pro, nice looking square, engraved markings that don't wear out, highly accurate. As you can see, the fence snaps into place on its own. Nice little click, 290 degrees and 180 degree detent, which is the one we're gonna be using today. We're going to go with our run on the, on the fence side and our rise with the fixed side. Uh, as you can see in the Pro, some of the Pro models are going to carry this removable jig block. Take a dime, just do this little turn screw, and the jig, jig block itself pops out. And the jig block is threaded for 10 by 32. What you do is you go down the jig slot, find the hole that you're choosing, you tighten it down, you don't compress it too hard because you have to set, set it to your mark. So at this point, with our rise, we're going to go with 7 and 3 eighths. We're going to go with a run of 10 inches. As you can see, there's dual markings for when the fence is in a 180 degree detent. That's exactly 10 inches. That's exactly seven and three eighths. At this point, give it a nice hard turn and you have the ability to slide it up and down your true material, making the marks for each step. Okay, I'm gonna start the top of my stringer and lay out down towards the bottom. So this is gonna be my very top step, 10 inch run, nice clean mark. Slide it over to my seven and three eighths mark. Slide it down. had 14 steps so I had to add one more and then uh, take the jig block out and I'm going to use the square use the, the smart square pro continue to use it in the 180 degree detent to do my last squaring process here nudge it to the line and that'll be my cutoff 
gonna I'm gonna drop it down seven and seven and three eighths, subtract the width of my treads, which will be an inch and a half, so that my top step has an inch and a half stair stair tread on top of it. And then I'll square that across and I'm gonna start cutting. Okay, so my last, my bottom step is going to be the seven and three eighths inch rise minus one and a half inches for my tread. I'm going to be putting two by 12 material on top of, of, the, of the stringer as treads. So the math on that would be five and seven eighths. I can hold my, hold my smart square in place in the 180 degree detent, make my mark at five and seven eighths, slide it over. Hold it on my line nice and tight. And that's gonna be the heel of my stairs. I've already subtracted my the width of my tread from the bottom of the heel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and subtract about another inch and an eighth because I put a piece of Trex deck on the bottom side to keep my material up and out of any moisture. And since this is kind of an exterior stair, I think this is a pretty good insurance. Okay, when you cut, when I cut stair stringers, I'm always careful never to cut beyond the line because this portion of the stringer is the remaining strength. You don't want to cut past. As a result, the unpleasant part is you have to hand saw them out. So I gave up on the unpleasant part using the hand saw. I've decided to go to a little sawzall method here so okay I uh, I need to make a correction I used the term sawzall a moment ago this is actually called a reciprocating saw sawzall is the proper name of the Milwaukee tool they make uh, in my opinion the best reciprocating saw on the market but this is technically not a sawzall this is a reciprocating saw and this is my last one to call We put, uh, we put our first stringer up to see how it's going to look and everything. I want to check it for level, so got the smart bubble included in this. According to that, it's absolutely perfect. 